My name is Eric Jolly, and I am the President and CEO of St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation. Because we're a community foundation, we have the good fortune of partnering with both nonprofits and donors throughout the state of Minnesota. These relationships give us a front row seat to tremendous acts of generosity and impact, of courage, compassion, love. And each day, especially during these challenging times in all corners of our state, from our smallest towns to our largest cities, people are working together to create an equitable, just, and vibrant Minnesota where all communities and people thrive. In this present moment, we'd like to share these stories with you. So joining me for this present moment is Mary. Mary is a fund holder with the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation and also someone who has been caring deeply about community in so many different ways. Now, Mary, I understand that you recently made a donation that allowed St. John's Hospital in Maplewood to install cameras in the neonatal intensive care unit, the NIC unit, I think is what they call it. Uh, and it was a long time in the making. Can you tell me more about the project? I am the advisor on a donor advice fund for a woman who used to be my neighbor. Sydney was a dear friend and she loved babies. And so I've been trying to do things with that money that would make her happy and put a smile on her face. So I looked at St. John's and they were part of Health East at the time. And part of the delay was the merger with um, Fairview. It ended up being that they got the iStat, the thermometers for these small babies uh, that is more accurate than what they had been using. That was installed right away. It was the camera situation, which they were mirroring what was done at Children's Hospital in St. Paul. And that's where they have a camera on the incubator and then the parents can take up an iPad and see the baby at any time. Well, the timing could not have been better. They installed it the morning of March 27th. Our governor instituted the stay at home order that afternoon. And these parents, I'm gonna start crying. These parents, the, the things that they've said, I, my uh, daughter-in-law worked as a nurse in that unit. The parents were just over the top how grateful they were, you know, that this was installed, that they had this, because that's, at that time, they couldn't even get in to see their baby. Oh, Cindy would just be smiling. She'd be, she'd be <laughs> dancing and having somewhere over this now. Um, because this is the kind of thing she, she loved babies, just loved them. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I can't imagine the stress of a sick child or a child that can't be home and the isolation from that child and everything else in the world turned upside down. What a comfort it is to just tune in and see your child and, 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 and be able to say your prayers. It's just wonderful. And even with nothing, even if it weren't for the pandemic, just to have a child in that situation that, you know, if it, you know, when you're a new parent, you have two in the morning, you just want to see, look at them. You can do that with this. It had gotten rave reviews at Children's, and that's why St. John's was so eager to get it. And we asked the people in the unit, what do you want? And this is what they said. This they said this is what would make families would make a difference to families in that situation. And it sounds like it. They hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it's, it's one of those stories you can't tell without a little tear coming to your eye. I I love the the joy that you get from thinking about how you're fulfilling someone else's wish, and at the same time knowing it's warming your heart. You talk about Sydney with such joy. Could you tell us a little more about uh, who she was and, and how you see your partnership continuing even now? Yeah, so she, oh, she was just fun. She was just caring, genuine, and honest. How wonderful. And she found the right friend to carry her legacy on through this work. You I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. I just, you know, just, she, uh, she was uh, unique, um, very, very unique. What other organizations or causes are near and dear to your heart? Well, one that's real big to me personally is I, I have done a lot with Special Olympics, and as did Sydney. She was there fighting for the underdog every step of the way. Special Olympics is probably the most near and dear to me, but I have a personal connection in that my nephew has Down syndrome. Stephen and a lot of his friends who are in 
special needs are all working right now, you know, and they're happy to go to work. So you're talking about people who are living wonderful, meaningful, impactful lives, and you're helping yeah. Stephen do that and serve others in a way that keeps them healthy, safe. Uh, that's really a wonderful thing. Can you share a story of someone in your community that's, who's inspired you with their resilience and action or creativity lately? Well, my, between my sister and my son, they're both real involved in Special Olympics. My sister just retired from 3M and just has dedicated most of her life to Special Olympics. But my son is working with a lot of special needs athletes on physical fitness and self-confidence and all that. And through this whole pandemic situation, he's been running these um, Zoom-type classes. And he gets 12 to 20 athletes per class. They, they need this stimulation. And they don't have the means to just get out and do things, even though there's nothing to do, <laughs> like we do. You know, they need metro mobility, or they need someone to bring them someplace. So they just love this. And then for those that could get there, he was doing some things in the parking lot. And one day I got a video of he has a couple athletes with these ropes pulling his jeep as a means of exercise. I I'm listening to him as he's talking to these athletes, and I'm like, I'm just really proud of him. Well, thank you. I think what's remarkable is you're telling the story of your entire family finding ways to give to their oh. community. When my father passed, was, was dying, he instructed all of us to not let Stephen, to leave Stephen behind. And no one's done that. Stephen might be leaving us behind with all he's accomplishing. It, he's the best thing that happened to our family. And so with all the generosity in your family and its habits, can you tell me a little more about why you think it's important to give back to your community? Well, you, you, you have to. It keeps the community going. You know, um, a lot of people fall on hard times, you know, whether it be a temporary or permanent situation. There's always someone in a worse spot and there's always someone in a better spot. You got to kind of just help everybody, you know, succeed. I, I have the pleasure from our view and the foundation of working with so many incredibly generous donors. They've really stepped up during the COVID era, but I've watched them do this as a lifestyle. And uh, so many of them tell me they get joy from being able to give back. Uh, could you tell me, would you like to share anything about what it's like to work with the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation? I don't know. I've never felt any pressure to, to do anything. It kind of do what is important to me or what I think Sydney would really like um, because I like to act in her best interest and education and babies were some of her top priorities. Um, she was a teacher. Mary, I can see your joy in both remembering Sydney and in the work that you do in, in her memory, in her honor and for our community. Thank you so much for spending this present moment with us. Oh, thank you.